Okay, Mrs. Baker's class, we are going to be drawing some zebras today. For this assignment, you will need a white piece of paper or a light piece of paper. You can also cut open a brown paper bag and use that as a drawing surface. You will need a pencil and an eraser and some sort of drawing materials. But make sure you have some black and if you're not using white paper, make sure you also have some white. As an added bonus or an added part, you may want to use some green watercolor or a cup of green paint. I have black here, but you might want to use a cup of green or you could also use a washable green marker or a stamp pad. So let's get started. If you see my um, drawing steps, which is attached to the assignment in Google Classroom, the zebras that I drew are very small, and you have the option of drawing the full body of the zebra or just the head of the zebra. Um, I think I'm gonna draw just the head and maybe part of the body. I'm gonna draw big, um, and I'm gonna hold my paper vertical. But if I were to draw the whole body, I would probably turn my paper horizontal. So at the very top, we're going to draw a sort of straight, but a little bit curvy line across, and then two lines that curve in down. And then at the very bottom, I'm gonna add an oval for the snout. Now I'm going to add two eyes with eyeballs. two nostrils in the snout, two big ears in the top corners, and a little spiky hair. Now I like to outline everything that I draw with a black marker just to enhance the lines, but you are the artist, so you can decide if you want to do that. You could also use a black crayon if you find that you don't have a marker or like me, your marker is drying up. A black crayon works pretty well also. And I'm gonna color in the hair at the top with a little bit of black. And I'm going to put some stripes, really skinny triangles across the top. And I'm gonna make them different sizes. I'm gonna make some go in from the sides and color them in. And I'm also going to color the ears and the snout. Now you can color this how you want to color it. It does not have to be the way that I am coloring it. Although typically zebras are pretty much black and white most of the time. But you are the artist so you can make this how you want to make it. Okay, now we're going to add a background. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a few bushes. And color them in green. And you can make a background however you want to make your background because, as I said, you are the artist. Now for the last part, I'm going to use watercolors, but like I said, you could use a cup of sm a small cup of paint, or you could use um, a stamp pad, or even color your finger with a washable marker. This is completely optional, so if you're looking at me thinking, no way, Mrs. TH, that's fine, or if you don't have the supplies, that's fine too. But I'm simply just getting my finger wet 
I'm getting a little bit of green and I'm making a third kind of little bush texture or pattern in the background of my picture. And this way we kind of have something that we can have for a keepsake with your fingerprint on it, which I think is always nice to have, especially in kindergarten. Um, now your background, like I said, can be however you choose to make it. It doesn't have to be like this. You could also use your fingerprint to make flowers or you can use your fingerprint to make your stripes, although I think that would be a little bit tricky. And I'm actually gonna use two different kinds of greens because if you see on my paint palette, I, I am lucky enough to have two greens on that paint palette, so I'm going to take advantage of that and use both. Okay, so there you have it. We have our Mrs. Baker's Zebras. Again, you don't have to do the background with fingerprints and you can make up your background however you want it to be. Take a picture and upload it to the Google Classroom. I cannot wait to see a class full of zebras.